A brain aneurysm is a focal outpouching from the side of a blood vessel in general. There's different types, but for general purposes, there's a small blister that comes off the wall of an aneurysm. And the problem with these is that they are very thin and they have the potential for rupturing. Some of the signs and symptoms of intracranial aneurysms uh, include rupture, and most patients will present with a rupture and describe it as the worst headache of their life. Some of the associated symptoms or problems that you would have if it did rupture are neck stiffness, uh, nausea, vomiting, problems with bright lights called photophobia, um, and a lot of people will actually go unconscious. If they're unruptured, those are a little bit more difficult to detect and they have a, a wide variety of presentations, but chronic headaches or new severe headaches that have changed in character, also problems perhaps with your eyes, um, difficulty with seeing, something that reflects that the aneurysm has gotten to a certain large size. Some patients will actually present with seizures. Um, treating a aneurysm using endovascular techniques uh, involves having the patient lie on a table, uh, making a small incision in the, the groin above the leg, uh, about half an inch across. Through that small incision, taking a small plastic tube through the blood vessels into the neck and ultimately into the brain. Um, through that small plastic straw that's inside of the blood vessels in the brain, slowly advancing um, basically uh, metal um, strands into the aneurysm to block either the tear or block the aneurysm from the normal blood vessel. These are generally done under general anesthesia, uh, so the patient uh, is completely asleep during the procedure, they're completely painless procedures, um, and they generally take between two and six hours. When treating aneurysms through the blood vessels, after an coils are placed within the aneurysm, the weakest part of the aneurysm, the top of the aneurysm, no longer gets blood getting to it. So there's no blood getting to the top of the aneurysm, so the risk of it rupturing is very, very low. So it's like taking a balloon and filling it with metal and then leaving the bottom of it open. And it's very important to keep the bottom of the balloon open so that the blood vessels going to the rest of the brain are remain open. One of the uh, benefits of uh, endovascular or neurointerventional approach to treating ruptured aneurysm is the relatively minimally invasive uh, aspect of the procedure, meaning there is no large uh, surgical approach to directly get at the aneurysm. Instead, there's a small incision made in the groin. There has been some good literature uh, which have propelled the field to uh, um, have significant improvements uh, which show that patients tend to have better outcomes at one year. And when I say outcomes, there's a smaller percentage of patients that are either dead or permanently disabled at a year if they're repaired by endovascular, meaning through the blood vessel techniques, versus open microsurgical techniques. That being said, it's very important to have both of those treatment options available to every institution, which we do have here. Um, some aneurysms cannot be fixed through the blood vessels, and some aneurysms are better fixed through the blood vessel.